set is huge and there's all sorts of things there. Um, I'm, I'm interested in all of it. And it's no accident that one of the things that characterises Bet now is the enormous number of people from overseas who come to see and to learn uh, and to explore technology. I guess I am very interested in, if you like, the kind of interactive resources for learning becoming more online and looking to see how that happens. Um, that's very exciting. I'm, I'm looking for that kind of online uh, data cloud type stuff uh, that I want to see, the, the, the virtual infrastructure I need now to sort of drive IT in the way that I wanted to go in school. BET attracts over 30,000 visitors to Olympia from across the globe. There's nearly 700 stands and more than 100 seminars. The main theme of BET 2010 is learning together through technology. But what exactly does this mean? For many, many years now, for the past 10 years really, the UK has invested very solidly in technology. Uh, and the young people um, have uh, expectations now of what their school should give them and what they should be learning. The teachers have now, if you like, embedded what they've been doing for the past 10 years. So it's the kind of linking together of the kids and what the teachers need to do. So it is absolutely how you learn best through technology, technology as a tool. For me, it's about starting to look a lot more critically at how we use ICT in the classroom uh, to develop teaching and learning. There is a, a temptation uh, to see ICT as, as an end in itself. One new company making its first appearance at BET and helping to put learning together through technology into practice is Stripey Design Limited with its debut software product, AnyThings. AnyThings um, allows children to make their own uh, animated cartoons. Who likes cartoons? Yay! <laughs> and it does it in a, in a new way, so it's not based on stop frame animation. It works simply by allowing the children to drag the things onto the screen that they want to use in their cartoon, such as different characters or shapes. And then they can create a, an animation by just recording the motion with the mouse. The product has been trialled with um, all primary age ranges from reception up to year six. So in reception they'll typically just drag on a few characters and create a very simple animation by dragging them around the screen. But the older children can make uh, multi-scene animations and really th think about a story that they want to tell with the animation. Children's animations can be uh, uploaded to a website or embedded into a learning platform so they can share them with other people. When I was designing the product, I, I looked at things like children's games. I wanted it to be a product that children felt that they, they enjoy using rather than feeling like it was um, a task or, or work. They feel like they're playing with the software and the end results, I think, reflect that. I really like AnyThings. I think it's, um, it's very easy for the children to use. It's child-friendly. It's appealing to them. It's, it's all clear on the screen for them to look at and they can find things very easily. Their reactions are very positive. They're excited. They were completely engaged with the programme. I would use it um, from reception right up to year six because the outcome and the, what the children do with it I think will be totally different. But I think it's, it, it would cover all ages. As online assessment comes of age, this is reflected in some of the products on show at BET 2010. Launched in October 2009, Boardworks will be showcasing their new online assessment tool called MyWorks. Uh, MyWorks is a formative assessment package um, specifically designed for your VLE. So what that consists of is approximately 150 quizzes which the teacher can then assign to the student through the VLE and then the quiz score will actually be fed back through to the VLE for the teachers uh, to see the next day. Uh, now there's four types of quizzes in it. There's uh, mini quizzes which are for day-to-day -day homeworks. There are super quizzes which are twice the size and they're more for kind of end of topic end of half term assessments. Um, then there's extension quizzes for the more able students that uh, links well with the gifted and talented and then the skills quizzes as well. And that's more like analysing data and uh, interpretation skills. MyWorks actually gives an assessment for the pupil as well so it gives a raw score that will then feed through to the VLE so the teacher can actually see how each student's progressing and whether they've actually completed the homework or not. Well for the pupils it's a fun interactive, engaging homework. So rather than taking home your textbooks and having to read big paragraphs, you've got something which is interactive and actually gives you the answer straight away, but then it'll take you to a recap slide if you've got it wrong, so then they can learn and progress from that. But a lot of VLEs will actually give the parents a login as well, so there'll be accessibility for the parents as well as the teachers to see the scores and see how the uh, pupils are progressing. 
very, very comprehensive. So the whole curriculum is covered. So there's always going to be a quiz there for the teacher to assign to the student, no matter where in the curriculum they're currently teaching. Educational IT innovators, Future Lab, will exhibit emerging, innovative technology which might prove useful in the classroom. A lot of the Future Lab's work is about basically um, sort of promoting innovative practice, yeah, and using technology to support that. So it's all about making links between technology, yeah, and its use in the classroom, and research and its use in the classroom. We're, we're showcasing Spark at BET this year, which is basically our, our mobile exhibition which has got a range of different technologies on it to support innovative practice in, in the classroom. A particular example of the mobile technologies is um, sort of 2D markers, where you can use your, um, use your phone or a webcam, you can hold it over a printed symbol and it will generate a piece of media, like a, a 3D object. There's everything from sort of eye gaze controlling technology, which is basically a way to control the computer just by looking. Yeah, so where you look on the screen, that will move the cursor. Uh, and if you want to double click on something, you, you, you look at it for a couple of seconds. What we try to do with Spark is take stuff that's kind of, you know, horizon is emerging, is out there, and then look at leading practice and also look at takeaway things that you can do. So although we might have a piece of kit, which it might be a, a bit more expensive than, than we can get on a day-to-day -day level, hopefully there'll be another way that you can take the idea behind that and use it in your classroom. There's a range of e-safety products at BET 2010. One exhibitor is Raw Educate with their updated US Online eSafety and eCitizenship package. US Online is an uh, online delivered module uh, where we actually look at eSafety, security um, and responsible use of the internet for uh, children uh, from Key Stage 1 right through to Key Stage 4. Probably the biggest difference that we've made here is that from being in the market for 12 months, we realised that it was really difficult for teachers to get their heads around uh, these issues. I mean, you have an issue where uh, students are actually right here in terms of technical know-how. Adults generally are lower. This is a generalisation. But in social maturity, it's, it's quite the reverse. So we wanted to actually, um, if you like, support the teachers in understanding the issues, how children are using uh, this wonderful resource. Um, what are the pitfalls there and, um, and how they might go about sort of helping students out and, and getting the debate in the classroom. It's not just about cyber bullying uh, or stranger danger, it's about the whole gamut. So password control, who owns what on the internet and how you can use it, right across the whole spectrum of issues. We have experts, we have teacher forums, we have students talking about what they're doing relevant to that particular issue. We supply the learning objectives for each of those uh, issues um, and also a lesson plan. We're aware that a number of government agencies are doing some really good stuff, but generally the government agencies have a one-eyed kind of remit. We've tried to actually take a quite a, a holistic approach because teachers uh, are very busy people, they're time poor, and to actually have to visit eight different websites to find this information, just it, it's just not feasible. That's why we've actually tried with the teachers to actually make it simple enough that anybody, whether it be the history teacher, the geography teacher, can actually get their head around these issues. We try not to differentiate between being a good citizen offline as being a good citizen online. You've got rights, but you've also got responsibilities. So, and I actually think that is where it needs to be. Vector's Next Generation Learning Initiative will be in evidence at the show. Next Generation is a fairly broad concept, I think. It's certainly to do with technology and how technology can support improving learning. I mean, that's really the, the heart of it. And thinking about, OK, here's some new opportunities. Because we've got new technologies, um, how can education make the most of them? And how has it made the most of them? And Next Generation Learning is ably demonstrated by Highland School's podcasting project over to the broadcasters in Year 6. The Children's Day have been planning their second podcast, which is going to be a mini ra radio station called Highlands FM. Welcome to Highlands FM News. I'm Abby. And I'm Bo uh, The children started to think about which segments they want in their podcast, um, when they're going to record their segments, and what type of music and sound effects they're going to want to accompany their podcasts. Um, and are we going to hear some extracts for those books? Or are you just going to recommend the books? Okay. We've been using Apple MacBook laptops and using the GarageBand program. We've been using the inbuilt microphones 
so we don't need additional microphones to plug in. One, two, three, action. Now about choir news. Being a choir member myself, I know in and out about it. It's very simple using the uh, inbuilt library of sounds and to drag and drop sound effects loops in um, and also to add fe effects to their own voices. Uh, the children have been focusing on different fiction genres and they wrote some suspense accounts to go into a story. Uh, what we decided to do was to record those onto a podcast and add sound effects. The children split themselves up into um, a planning group, a recording group and then an editing group. And then we had our sound tech guys who started to put things together and put their sound effects in. Hi, here on the Den News are Charlie, Ken. Today we will be talking about the outside world. Now that we have finished our first complete podcast, our aim is to share that with the school and then also to publish it on our MLE so that parents and children can listen and share at home. It's especially motivated the boys to pick up their pens and write and really improve their speaking and listening skills. The children thoroughly enjoy podcasting. In fact, when we began every morning, the first thing they would ask is, are we podcasting today? We have shown our commitment as a school to next generation learning and podcasting is a technology that children are using at home widely across the internet and we want to incorporate that into school life. Each year the prestigious BET Awards acknowledge excellence in educational technology. Here's a quick look at a couple of the 2010 nominees. Mantra Lingua's Recorder Pen is a contender in the digital devices category. Articles. By touching sound spots on books and charts, children can access pre-recorded narrations and definitions in 20 languages. Arabic. They can also record and save their own voice, helping to improve their speaking and storytelling skills. Global Conflicts Palestine, from Serious Games Interactive, has been nominated for the Secondary FE and Skills Digital Content category. With the underlying themes of democracy, human rights and terrorism, this 3D role-playing game allows students to explore the Israeli-Palestinian conflict through the eyes of a journalist. Finally, what should you bear in mind when you visit BET 2010? I think if you look at what's happening now in terms of what's of real use in the classroom, it's to do with making technology smaller. Um, and it's to do with how much you can get those devices um, to, to be used both in the classroom and outside the classroom. There's lots of very innovative stuff on the tiny stall tucked away around the back um, that's, you know, a tiny little software company that's got a great idea which has yet has not been spotted. So it's well worth rootling around those little stalls as well as those mammoth stalls that RM and Apple and uh, Microsoft and all of us have. It's a wonderful networking event. Uh, this is a very small industry actually, you know, the number of teachers in each school who've really got their head around where technology might take their curriculum, their organisation, their school day, the number of policy makers who can understand that, the number of ministers, you know, we're talking about a few thousand people really. So BET is just this extraordinary, it's the biggest event of its kind in the world. Yeah.